It was one late autumn day. Two young men were wandering about, deep in the mountains. Carrying shiny rifles, they went up and down in the mountain forest. They had two large dogs following them. Fallen leaves made a rustling sound as they walked through the forest. They were hunters from the town. One man said, What's wrong with these mountains? I don't see any animals or birds, all day. The other man said, I want to shoot, whatever shows up in front of me. It will be so much fun if we can give a few shots to the yellow belly of a deer. Yeah, it will spin like a top and fall down like a log. The mountains were so deep. Even their guide got astray and lost sight of his clients. Moreover, the dogs they came with, became sick. They growled for a while, fell, and died with foam on their mouths. I have just lost 2000 yen. Said one man, checking an eyelid of his dog. I have lost 3000 yen. Said the other, shaking his head in frustration. Watching the face of the other, one said. I think we should go back. I was thinking of the same thing. It's getting colder, and I'm getting hungry. Okay, then, let's call it a day. Well, you know, they sell game birds at the lodge. If we buy a few of those, that will do it. Yeah, I saw rabbits too. If we take them back it will be just fine. Let's go back. However, without the guide, they had no idea which way to go. The howling wind came and made rustling sound on the grass and leaves. The trees were whistling and rattling. I'm getting hungry. I don't want to walk anymore. I'm hungry, too. I cannot walk much longer, either. I'm getting so tired. But I have no idea where we are now. I need to eat something. True. We need to eat something. They were talking, as they wandered, through the woods, aimlessly. Then, suddenly, they spotted a modern house in the woods. There was a sign at the entrance. It said, Restaurant, Wild Cat House. Hey, that's sweet. A little civilization deep in the mountain. Hmm. That's strange. But, maybe, we can eat here. Of course. It says it's a restaurant. Let's get in. Okay, let's get in. I'm starving to death. They came and stood at the entrance. There was a note on the door. It said, Anyone is welcome. Please feel free to come in. They exclaimed happily. Hey, how about this? After the rain, comes the sun. We had a tough day, but we are in for a treat now. And feel free to come in means the meal must be free. Cheerfully, they opened the door and went in. When they closed the door, they noticed another small sign on it. Chubby or young customers are especially welcome. They were happy to see this. Hey, we are especially welcome. I'm relevant to both conditions. They walked down the corridor. Then there was another door. Strange house, isn't it? Why are there so many doors? It's a Russian style. It's common in cold places and mountains. When they tried to open the door, they saw another sign. Please understand that this is a restaurant with many orders. Hmm. It seems to be a busy restaurant, in a remote place like this. Well, this must be a first-class restaurant. You know, high-class restaurants are often in secluded places. They opened the door and moved into the next room. Then, there was another note on the back of the door. Please be patient. As we have many orders indeed. One guy frowned. What does this mean? The other said. Hmm. This probably means that the restaurant is very busy, so there are a lot of orders. And it will take time before the meal is served. I see. Anyway, I want to get in a warm room. Yes, and I want to sit at a table. But then, they saw another door on the other end of the room. There was a mirror on the wall. And underneath, 
There was a small table with a comb and a brush. There was a sign. Please comb your hair. And brush off the dirt from your shoes here. They are right. I underrated this house, since it's in the mountains. Apparently, this house has strict manners. High-ranked people must often visit this house. They carefully comb their hair and clean their shoes. Strangely, as soon as they put the comb and the blush back to the table, they faded and disappeared, and a gust of wind blew into the room. The men were astonished. They got closer and moved into the next room. They felt uneasy and feared something unimaginable might happen, unless they eat something warm soon. There was another strange note on the back of the door. Please leave rifles and bullets here. There was a rack beside the door. Sure, that's the etiquette. You cannot bring firearms into the dining room. Well, the house must often be visited by great people. They removed their rifles and bullets and put them on the rack. There was another door on the other side of the room. The sign on it said, Please remove your hats, coats, and shoes. There were cloth baskets placed near the door. Well, should we do this? We have no choice. It must be warm in the dining room. They took off their shoes. Then they removed their hats and coats, and put them in the baskets. They opened the door, and got into the next room. Inside the door, there was another strange note. Please remove tie pens, cufflinks, earrings, glasses, wallets, and any other metal things that have sharp edges and leave them here. There was a silver safe right next to it with a key. One guy said, I see. They must use electricity for some cooking. Metallic things could be dangerous. Absolutely. So maybe we pay here on the way back? Hmm, that seems like it. They took off their glasses, removed wallets and watches, etc. And put them in the safe and locked it. They kept going. And found another door on the other end of the room. The sign on the door said, Please apply the cream to your face, hands and toes thoroughly. And there was a jar by the door. What was inside of the jar was high quality milk cream. What do they mean by putting cream on? Oh, you know, it is so cold outside. And inside the dining room must be warm and dry. So they want to prevent customers from chapping. I see. I think this restaurant hosts some noble people. We may get acquainted with celebrities here. They put the cream on their faces, hands and toes, and rubbed it down. Then they opened the door and moved into the next room in a hurry. There was another note on the back of the door, saying, Did you apply the cream thoroughly? Did you apply it to your ears? And there was a small cream jar next to the door. Ah, uh, I forgot about my ears. I almost got them chapped. The master of this house is very thoughtful. You're right. He must be considerate and well prepared. By the way, I'm so hungry, and I want to eat soon. I wonder how many more doors we need to go through. Then they saw a sign on the next door. The meal is almost ready. We won't make you wait for more than 15 minutes. It will be served soon. Please apply the perfume to your head. And there was a bottle of perfume by the door. The men vigorously sprinkled the fragrance on their heads. But somehow, the perfume smelled like vinegar. This perfume smells like vinegar, doesn't it? They brought the wrong bottle. Maybe the maid had a cold and couldn't tell the difference. They opened the door and went into the next room. When they closed the door, they saw another sign. We are sorry that we gave you so many orders. This is the last one. Please apply salt all over your body and rub it down thoroughly. And there was a jar of salt on a table. However, this time, the men watched each other's cream rubbed face in fright. I think something is terribly wrong. I think you are right. The many orders, you know, are being given from them, not from us. 
Well, that means, that this restaurant, I think, is not the place to serve meals to the visitors. But rather, they make the visitors into a meal. That means, that, we. His body started rattling and shaking and he could not speak any longer. Well, it means that we are. The other man was also rattling and shaking, and he could not speak either. Let's, Let's get, get out, out of here. here. They rushed to the door and pushed it. But the door was locked and did not move at all. They looked back. There was a set of doors at the end of the room. The sign on it said. Thank you for coming here. It was all well done. Now, please get into my stomach. And through the opening. There were two eyes, staring at the men. Yikes. The two men were rattling and shaking. Staring at each other. But they could not move. They started crying. Voices came from the doors. Ah, that's too bad. They noticed it. They are not putting the salt on. Of course not. The boss wrote a stupid note, like we are sorry we gave you so many orders. That was so dumb. Well, it doesn't make any difference to us anyway. He won't give us anything, not even a bone. That's true, but if they don't come in here, he'll blame us. That's right. Well then, should we call him? Let's call them. Hey, customers, please come in. Come in now. Please. Hurry, hurry! The dishes are clean and shiny. Lettuce leaves are fresh and sprinkled with salt. We just have to put you guys on the white dishes and arrange. Please come in. Please hurry. Or you don't like salad. Well, then I can turn up the fire and make you into fries instead. Anyway, please come in. Hurry, hurry! The two guys were so scared, and their faces became full of wrinkles, like waste paper balls. They were shaking and rattling. They hugged each other and kept crying. Inside the doors, the voices were still laughing. He, he he. Please don't cry, you'll lose all the cream from your faces. We'll serve you soon. Please come in. Hurry hurry. Hurry, hurry! Now the master has put the napkin on his knees and already with a knife and fork. He's waiting for you. Hurry, hurry! The two men kept crying, 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 and crying. Then all of a sudden, they hear barks from behind. The two large dogs that the men came with, rushed into the room. As the dogs dashed to the doors, the eyes of the beasts disappeared. The dogs growled and then barked loudly. They jumped to the last doors. The doors opened. The dogs rushed into the darkness. Then there were rooms in the darkness, followed by a rustling noise. The room disappeared like smoke, and the two men found themselves sitting on the grass. Cold wind was blowing. They looked around. And saw their coats, shoes, hats, wallets, and glasses, etc. Hanging on the branches here. And scattered around on stumps there. A gust of wind came. The grass and the falling leaves made a rustling sound. The trees whistled and rattled. The dogs came back, panting. From behind the dogs, they heard that someone was shouting. Hey! Hey! Their guide had finally found them. It was close to dusk. The two men ate the dumplings the guide had brought and went back to the lodge. They bought a few game birds and went back to the town the next day. But the wrinkles on their faces, did not go away. Even hot springs, could not restore their faces.